So I've been building furniture for, oh, I don't know, since 2005, as a business since 2011. This is the best as far as challenge and um, just the, the level of skill needed to build the best commission I've gotten. I've been very excited about it, very anxious about it. The client has trusted me with this build. He's a really good client of mine. And he, he had some escarpment cherry that he cut off his ranch and he wanted it turned into a dresser. Um, and this is a traditional design based off of a historic Texas piece that's in a catalog. Uh, it features dovetail drawers. It's, it's very traditional in its construction. Uh, you don't find modern hardware in it. Uh, so for me as a furniture maker, I cannot wait to get into this and build it and, and kind of accept the challenge and hopefully not screw it up. So while I'm roughing out these parts, let me tell you a little bit more about the escarpment cherry. This is a species of American black cherry that grows specifically in the Texas Low Country, which is where I'm located, it's where my shop's located. Uh, it's kind of the central area, central Texas area. It's a really beautiful wood. Uh, it's pretty similar to the American black cherry. It's just a little darker in color and has a little bit more character in my opinion. So with the parts roughed out, uh, I take them over to my S4S. Now an S4S stands for surface four sides and it's basically a, a machine that planes all four sides of a board in one pass. So I set all my settings, feed the board through and it pops out dimension square and to the sizes I need. It's an amazing machine that saves me a lot of time in the shop. Um, it basically takes this place of three machines, a table saw, a joiner, and a planer. For the sides of the dresser, I'm gonna use a technique uh, called book matching. So what I've got here is probably an inch and a half thick, inch and a quarter thick board that I'm cutting directly down the middle to a heavy 5 uh, three maybe three quarters of an inch, and then you once you split this board in half, you open it up, the grain matches exactly uh, together, and it's a really, really cool look, and it really adds a, a level, a higher level of character to the piece. And when you get, when we get further along in this build, you'll see exactly how well that looks. So before I can glue up these two boards, I just, I always fine tune the glue joints uh, using a Stanley number seven, a uh, fairly simple process. Um, always clearing the shavings out of the throat of the plane so i can see my shaving i'm always going to be watching the shaving coming off the plane quick test and i'm sure it's looking good so when i'm building a project i'm always thinking ahead on what needs to be glued up so that i can get that in the clamps first and do other work it's just trying to be productive with your work and so that's why i've, I've started with these panels i want to get them in the clamps get them glued up and then get them sanded to size Okay, with the panels and the clamps, I can now turn my attention to cutting the mortises. There's a lot of mortises to cut in these four posts. There's a total of 36. So um, I will lay every one of them out. Um, and what you see me doing here is using my knife. I've actually scribed, I'm transferring my lines from my other part to this part. So everything is transferred from part to part. So it's an exact match. And I use the knife because you get the knife puts a 100% accurate marking point as opposed to a pencil, which has some variance in the, the thickness of the line. Um, so I always use my marking knife, transferring things from part to part, lay out every single mortise and make sure that they're all in the right spot. That's, that's kind of my process. It takes a while to do the layout. I would have used my mortiser here, but I didn't, I didn't have the right tooling on it because uh, I kind of screwed up the tooling. I'm cutting 3 8 mortises and I, I forget what I did, but I did something to the mortiser. I couldn't use it basically. So I had to I had to step up and use my plunge router with a fence, which works fine as well. You're just gonna, I'm gonna have to square up all the mortises with a chisel, which adds a little bit of time. Um, but you know, that's just the way it works sometimes. Basically all I've got here is a three eighths, three eighths, three eighths inch spiral up cut bit. Uh, and I'll go through and cut all the mortises and then uh, we'll come back with a chisel and work on squaring them out. So this process, you know, you can leave your tenons round to match the mortise so you don't have to do this. I prefer to have squared off mortises. I, there's really no advantage one way or the other. You're going to take more time to square them off or you're going to take more time to round them off.
So now what I need to do right here, what you're seeing me do is I'm setting up a depth stop. And so I want to cut half inch deep. So I'm using my half inch chisel to set my depth stop on my router. And I'm cutting a half inch deep groove for the panels that we made. So that groove is going to run the whole length of this post. Uh, and it, it provides a space, it provides a slot for that panel to rest in. You can see my daughter's art back there. She's quite the artist, and I love hanging her paintings up on the wall. She brings me a new one probably every day, so it, it's constantly getting refreshed. All right, so you can see the groove, and then that mortise is where that top and bottom rail will drop in. That will make more sense going in. So right here, real quick, make note of the three mortises you didn't see in the video, but those hold uh, the drawer runners, and that will also make sense as we get further in the video. The mortises I'm cutting now, these are being cut on the Lee FMT mortising jig, which is a really nice jig, and it's cutting double mortise and tenon. So you can see here I've got two side-by-side -side mortises. Um, same technique, it's going to leave a, a rounded um, mortise hole, so I'm going to square it up with a chisel. And then when I cut the tenons, I'll do them on that lead FMT. And the reason I'm using that is because it will very accurately cut side by side double mortise and tenons like that much better than any other tool I have in the shop. So it, it's great to use for the specialized type of joinery. And those mortises are for the front drawer dividers. Okay, so here I'm setting up the table saw to cut a fairly large bevel on the two front posts of the dresser. This is a really cool design detail and this actually proved to be a pretty big mistake um, and you'll see this down the road when I try to glue this case up because I've taken off that corner. I don't have a good, I don't have the proper pressure on my clamps to, to get good clamping pressure. It, it's not making sense but when I glue it up you'll see the struggle I have. I should have left that piece and after I completely assembled the case, I could have used a track saw and just zipped that corner right off. So I'm going to hand plane off the saw marks and I want you to notice on the next shot there's a glue joint on this post. It's two pieces of wood put together but I, I, I designed it in a way that that bevel hits right on the glue joint so it hides it so you wouldn't you really can't see the glue joint um, because of the way the bevel is positioned on it. All right so that the posts are all done we're going to move on to cutting tenons. I did all the tenons on the table saw with exception of those double mortise and tenons. Um, dado stack set up with a, with a stop on my fence, fairly easy process. Um, just run them all through and check the fit. That's about the fit you want. You don't want it to be so tight that you have to slam it in, especially the way that post is designed, it could crack that post. I love to use this little rabbit plane to fit my tenons. I can dial it in really nice. So you can see that haunch there on the top. How there's that little notch and it just slides in. The mortise goes all the way to the top. It's a pretty traditional way of doing things. Um, and when you have a panel, you always you always end up with that. So the glue up is always a bit stressful. You're working against time. Glue, 
glue will set up fairly quickly. So I've got a lot of parts to assemble here. This is just the side of the dresser. You'll notice the three white parts in the middle. Those are the actual drawer runners. The, the drawers will run against those and those get mortise and tenon in as well. The uh, outside pieces here that I'm doing now, those are the top and bottom rails. And then the panel, I'm gonna slide into those. Now I've pre-finished this panel. Um, so it's already got a coat of oil on it. It's a little tight there. So I've got my, my rabbit plane to kind of shave her down. That's a little better. And the reason I pre-finish it is, I, for one, I, it makes it easier. I can't get finished on the back side with those runners there. And two, if any glue squeezes out into the corner of that panel, it keeps it from grabbing onto the panel, which would stop the panel from shrinking and swelling, causing it to crack. All right, so you're about to see the issue with the, with the bevel here. This side clamps up no problem. Um, but when I flip it, you'll notice, oh, and here I'm, I've got my chisel and I'm working on the reveal of the panel. You know, that's got to be perfect because it's inside the case. No one's going to see it. So it really doesn't matter. So here, the clamp, the corner's missing. So I'm having a really hard time getting the pressure in the right spot. It's wanting to kink that part down, that post. And luckily, the drawer runners helped keep everything lined up. But I did run into a few issues where I could not quite shoulder up that tenon, um, which really was frustrating. You see me kind of working some glue down in there. So I'm gonna take a straight edge and I have to make sure that I'm pretty close to, to flat along that plane because I'm gonna be gluing parts to that bottom side. So uh, I can't be kinked if that makes sense. So we're on the next day, I've glued everything set. I'm gonna run these panels through my wide belt, very lightly take off material. I wanna level them out. Um, I know I, I checked it with the ruler, but they were a little off. And so I think I probably ended up taking off a 32nd or 16th. To, to level those parts out, um, get them nice and flat. Now I'm gonna cut them to length, make sure they're both the exact same. I, I don't want these parts to be different in any way because it's gonna put twist in my case. And since doors are fitted into this case, I need it to be very, very accurate. So I wanna make sure, I take my time here and make sure that my parts, my two sides are the exact same length. They're squared up, perfect, exact same width. Everything is the exact same. And it looks good. Um, Okay, so with the sides ready to glue up, I have to do the jaw dividers, the tenons, those double tenons. And I'm using, this is Lee FMT's mortising jig. I use this thing a lot. It's a really, really good product. Um, and you'll see here, this is a 3 8 up cut spiral bit, cutting the full inch depth tenon. Um, and basically, I've, I've got an attachment to the bottom of my router that's running in pins. And there's guides, and they, they guide you. Uh, you're going to see it here. That's the first 3 8 tenon right there. That's the space between them. And I'm going to move and come back to the back side uh, and cut the second tenon. And that's it. So I'll check the fit. You know, that's the great thing about that mortising jig is you can really dial in the fit on these. And it... Uh, that is a really, really solid joint. You know, it, a lot of times people will do sliding dovetails on these drawer dividers. That's another great way to do it. Um, but this double mortise and tenon is a great joint here. It's going to be solid. It's going to hold up uh, really well. Okay, so now with that done, I am ready to assemble this case. Uh, again, this is this is a, a bit of a brutal assembly. Uh, it didn't go very smooth, which you really don't see in the video, but I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. Uh, everything came together, the joints all fit perfect, but that, that bevel just gave me a, gave me a real headache. Um, because I just couldn't get the clamp pressure. I c actually couldn't close, couldn't shoulder up a couple of those dividers, so I had to go back and kind of fill some gaps. And this was really fun, trying to get all these pieces into the mortise. It took took some tapping and some work you don't you don't realize it because I've sped up the video but it, it was quite a bit of work to get that all fitted so the same deal you can see the clamps the pressure is way too low it's not in the right spot I need those corners on those posts to really shoulder up those drawer dividers so there's my dog mayor Getting, I was checking out a fly or something. 
The, after the case comes out of the clamps, I've got to flush up all these drawer dividers and edges. So I just use a hand plane. This is my Stanley four and a half. It's my one arm, one hand technique here where you have to reach with the plane. Um, it's not that long of a process. You just get everything nice and flushed out. And then I do do some sanding uh, over that. Here I'm starting to install the bottom trim. There's an apron that wraps around this. I've got the first two pieces on. I'm working on this front piece. Um, but they're not actually glued on yet. I'm just kind of dry fitting them. So my process was, you know, to set the, the tilt on the saw, table saw to cut my bevel uh, using the slider. And then, you know, I would make a few cuts, kind of sneak up on it. You want to be real careful here because I only had one piece. The grain flows all the way around uh, this case and I only had one piece to do that. So I didn't want to mess this up, so I took my time. So you can use a shooting board and a hand plane to fine tune these angles and these bevels and you would have to make a, a specifically designed board for these angles because usually shooting boards are going to cut at a 90 or 45. Here I've got this awesome 14 inch 8 disc sander that tilts on bevels and it does an amazing job of fine tuning the angle. I can just barely move that head and fine tune it exactly how I want it and it works really really well. Um, saves a lot of time so I took advantage of that. Here I'm gluing on the back piece. Uh, put some Festool dominoes in there that will attach to that side apron. Uh, this back piece helps provide support. So if you drag the dresser or kick the apron, you know you have something on the back that's got it from kicking in and, and breaking off that apron. And you can see too, uh, there's a frame on the bottom of the dresser that we didn't show, but I built basically a frame that helps allow this trim to attach to this apron. So with that back piece on, I just got to flip this thing. This thing's starting to get really heavy. I was surprised at how much weight was in it. Uh, once I get it flipped over, I can start gluing and just nailing on that bottom apron. Um, you can see those little dominoes that go in there, almost like floating tenons that help secure that side apron on. Now you also will notice I cut a profile on these, which we didn't show, but I just used the bandsaw. I, I made a couple patterns, traced them out, and then cut that profile on there. Uh, fairly simple process. So I'm using a little brad nailer to just just basically tack them in place. The glue joints, the glue is going to hold it, but I want that nail to kind of keep it where it's supposed to be. This is where my kids walk in at the most opportune time, right when I'm in the middle of a glue up. For a long time, I when I was filming, I would tell them to to kind of give me my space, but I'm kind of over that. So they're going to show up in videos randomly because they they run into the shop constantly. I think we got it. What do you think? Look at it. It looks pretty. She approves, which is always great. She actually always approves. That's the awesome thing about kids. So once the glue sets and dries, I just come with my block plane. I level out those feet. One thing you want to do um, whenever you have any contact of wood to the floor is you want to bevel it so if it gets dragged, it doesn't split the wood. So there's also a bevel trim on top of that apron that makes a transition from the apron to the case. Uh, and I'm working on that here. You can see how I've cut, it's gone out of focus, um, but I've cut consecutive miners in the same piece so that the grain wraps. And I'm using the, the, the eight sander here, the disc sander to, to fine tune those joints just the same. And really sneak up on it with that.
So that gets glued on and pinned on exactly like the bottom apron. And finally, I obviously I already have the top to the dresser glued up. I didn't film that. Uh, it's pretty basic. But there is a cove that runs under that top. Another transition from the top to the case uh, that looks really nice. And, you know, this is the exact same process as the front, the bottom one. So um, didn't put a whole lot of time into filming it. But, you know, same thing. Cut it on the table saw, use the sander, and then, then brad nail it on. I was really happy with how those joints came out. Everything worked really well. Um, I'll fill those holes before I finish, and it, it really I'm really happy with it. All right, so that wraps it up for this part of the video. Uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed it. This is a new style for me, narrating these videos. Uh, for those of you who love the ASMR, the quiet videos, those are still available. I'm posting both, so I don't want to leave you guys hanging. Uh, those You can go watch that video as well. Um, this will be on larger projects like this. This will be how I move forward. Uh, it's probably do two styles of videos. In the next part, we're going to cut the dovetails for all the drawers. We're going to fit the drawers. Uh, we'll install half mortise locks um, and do the final um, assembly of the, the dresser and finish it. So I'm really excited for you guys to see that. That should be coming up shortly. So please remember to subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and stay tuned for part two.